So tonight I'd like to use a microphone and draw a line in the sand and make a differentiation between GMOs, genetically modified organisms, and glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. Glyphosate was patented in 1964 by Stafford Chemicals and their business is cleaning pipes and boilers. And if you read the patent, you'll see this long, long list of metals that it attaches to and makes inert or biotically unavailable. Now, after you clean your boiler, you want to dispose of it in, get, put clean water in your boiler. And if you dispose of it in nature, you see very quickly that it kills plants, almost all plants. That's when Monsanto bought the chemical and repatented it as an herbicide. And if you read the patent, you'll see this long, long list of plants that it kills. Very powerful. So how does it work? All life processes in all life, plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, humans, all life processes depend on metalloproteins. We call them enzymes. These are huge molecules. And right at the center is a tiny atom of metal. This could be copper, iron, zinc, anything. Glyphosate will bind to the metal and make it inert. Why do we care? Because plants use enzymes in their shikimat pathway to make their own amino acids. Why do we eat plants? We don't make all of our amino acids. Uh -huh. So in agriculture, or in your garden, you spray an herbicide and then later you plant your crop, or you would kill the plants. But in 1996, when the first Roundup Ready crops were introduced, soy and corn, it was an amazing feat. Now you don't worry about weeds, you plant your crop, the weeds come, you spray the weeds. They come back, you spray them again, and again, and again, and again. And you don't kill the crop. So Roundup Ready technology has become incredibly successful. You can see from 1996 to 2014 that almost 100% of corn, soy, canola, sugar beet, and cotton grown in this uh, country and Canada is GMO. That doesn't leave a whole lot of room for anything else. Now, when you spray Roundup on a crop, it doesn't just stay on top. It penetrates the cells and penetrates the shikimat pathway. And you can see in this German study that it, it accumulates in the crop, these foods that we're eating. Why would we eat that? Why would we eat it? <laughs> this is a series of papers from the USDA showing the severe depletion of minerals in soybeans. Makes perfect sense. It's a descaling agent. Up to 85% less minerals in GMO soy than normal soy, which leads me to the concept of substantial equivalence. This, this concept was put forward in 1996 when the crops were commercialized, and it says, well, this is basically the exact same thing. It just has one extra gene, so we don't have to do human testing. So this is corn. Looks like corn, tastes like corn. But in 2013, the USDA quietly changed the weight of a bushel of corn. That's because 99% of corn now grown is GMO and two pounds of minerals are missing. Now I'm 59 and I've worked for several veterinarians and I can tell you we never heard of metabolic disease in horses or diabetes in cats and dogs. It's not just us we're feeding this to. <laughs> now, the date here is not important because this is not a patent. It's a new use for the herbicide Roundup as a desiccant. If you spray it on non-GMO plants, it kills the crop. But if you're close to harvest, who cares? Combines don't like green matter. One week before harvest, you can kill most cereal crops, and it's completely okay. None of these crops are engineered yet, but the same binding of the minerals will occur. So we have a descaling agent that became an herbicide, that became a magic herbicide, that became a desiccant, which is now sprayed routinely on most crops, even on sugar cane, because it raises the content of the sugar. And finally, in 2001, Monsanto filed a patent for glyphosate as an antibiotic, and they were granted it in 2010. If you read the patent, you'll see this long, long list of bacteria it kills. Very powerful and broad spectrum. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> now, this is a German study showing that at one part per million, glyphosate killed most bacteria in the guts of hens. But what was far more interesting was that Clostridium and, and Salmonella were resistant. 
And if you're a veterinarian, you've seen greater outbreaks of salmonella in poultry houses and Clostridium botulism, the botulism bacteria in cattle, and Clostridium difficile. Go figure. Uh, now, I think this should have been headline news, but I, it's just me. Um, scientists and the medical community have recently reclassified our gut as the microbiome. And they think of it as, an, as a new organ, as important as the heart or the brain. Did you know that only 10% of your cells are human cells? And only 1% of your genes are human genes? You are a symbiotic organism. You are a human shell. But those bacteria there in your gut, they're not just digesting things. They're speaking to each other. This is a, a, a study from the University of Bangkok showing the incredible sensitivity of human breast cancer cells. A part per trillion is one million times less than a part per million. Now, this should have been headline news, too. In 2013, the Environmental Protection Agency quietly raised the legal residue levels of glyphosate in foods by quite a bit, still not requiring human testing. Now, I think that's a little conflict of interest. If you read the label on Roundup or go to the Monsanto site, they say it dissipates in 10 to 172 days. So we don't really need legal residue limits, do we? This is the state of the world right now. Personally, as a farmer, I'd like to get all chemicals out of the food supply, but especially this one, because I know I need my minerals and I love my bacteria. And I would love to talk to you more about this. So call me. <laughs>